Good evening, and we start tonight with an apology to Sean Woodward, the Labour candidate for St Helens South. Last week we stated that Mr Woodward has a butler. He has since gone on record to say, I haven't got a butler, we just have three people who look after the house. <laughs> Our apologies, therefore, to Mr Woodward, his pastry chef, scullery maid and chimney sweep. <laughs> In the news this week, Rail Track are proud to announce that Britain's railway services are now running as normal. <laughs> uh, secret footage reveals why we've not heard much from Norman Tebbit in this election campaign. <laughs> and in London, Cow and Gate decide to withdraw Chicken Vindaloo from their range of baby foods. Ian Hislop's team is the soon-to-be former editor of The Independent on Sunday, who will be turning her back on newspapers shortly after the election. Coincidentally, the same time William Hague will start delivering them. <laughs> Janet Street Porter. <laughs> and with Paul Merton tonight is a rock star who, back in the 70s, made history with 12 top 10 albums, 15 gold discs and countless world tours, something of which he's justifiably proud, or would be if he could remember any of it, Elton John. <laughs> so much for the intro. Now the vocals, uh, provided by Ian and Janet. Uh, who are these people? Tony Blair holding a little memo pad. Oh, it's the press. It's, it's, it's there. Meet the people. I'm sorry, it's Meet the People. <laughs> um, He's not allowed to speak. He's not allowed to speak. This is the election campaign where very few people have spoken. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's John Prescott's five election pledges. <laughs> Yeah, so who have uh, Labour been laying into this week? Margaret McDonough, who sounds like some sort of kebab, but um, <laughs> I, I believe she's some sort of spin person, and she wrote a letter to the BBC saying, you're inciting these protests, you're going round filming incidents. Which, given that it's an election, um, and the incidents are laid on by the Labour Party, that's sort of what the telly's meant to do. We but are... The other thing is, Angus, this is the election where... So few people are allowed to speak, it's amazing. Like, if you were a Martian and you just landed in Britain, you'd just think, oh, we've got three parties, three major parties contesting this election. There's the Lib Dems. Well, there's only one person in the Lib Dems, Charlie Kennedy. Fair enough. None mm -hmm. of the women are speaking. Well, Margaret Beckett occasionally. But they've narrowed it down to this tiny cast list of characters. You've got more characters on Survivors or any episode <laughs> of East End. <laughs> I mean, there's going to be an election in Tehran uh, about the same time as our election. I think you'll find women are saying more under the eye of <laughs> than they are saying in the British election. Well, I think you're overlooking Jerry Halliwell and Britney Spears' involvement. <laughs> well, Jerry Halliwell, she was a real gift for the Labour Party, wasn't she? She said a it's very important to vote. But she's forgotten to register. <laughs> or she can't very register because it's a security risk. Yeah. I mean, Ian, have you not registered? Because you might, you might get attacked. People might come round your house and see where you live and attack you. That's a good point. <laughs> and it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> What's more serious, Angus, is that it's very hard as a newspaper editor to cover the election if Labour don't want you to interview anyone. So mm. you ring up Mo Mola, no, I can't give you an interview. It says that it, you could talk about control on a massive level here. And I think the, the, the uh, Tory party have done the same. I mean, last week I went to see Ted Heath. I gave him a bottle of scotch and it took 45 minutes to winkle out of him that, you know, a second defeat at the polls would be good for the Tories and obviously there's no love lost there. It's a great picture, isn't it? <laughs> Janet and Ted Heath and a bottle of scotch. <laughs> <laughs> so how hopeless is Hague? <laughs> he, he's very hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> It's, you've expanded your range. I know. <laughs> but uh, we've been blaming Labour for things as well this uh, this week. I say we, well, you the media, has been blaming uh, Labour for various things, like giving out wrong information as to when Blair's going to turn up or disappear from places. Yes, well, they don't want anyone to actually see him arrive. Mm. Then they might talk to him. <laughs> and that's terrible. That look Blair gets in his eyes when someone real appears. <laughs> 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 Alistair didn't say he was coming. <laughs> and there's been a little makeup tip. Uh, oh, it's his teeth, isn't it? That's right. He smears them with Vaseline. No, that's oh, yeah, just that's a rumour. That's an old beauty <laughs> contest <laughs> trick, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, you smear your gums with Vaseline so you can smile more easily. Your lips glide over them quicker. <laughs> <laughs> so which uh, celebs have been wheeled out? For Labour. For Labour, Dickie Bird. 
cricket umpire. Right. Jane McDonald, we, we saw in the VT, in fact. And even Michael Winner apparently came out. Well, for Labour. For yes, Labour. he did come yeah, he's out voted Tories. That's the for... first good sign for the Tories yet. <laughs> <laughs> if yes. Michael Winner's on Who's their side. Who's come out for the Tories, anyway? Oh, Portillo. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, this is the uh, escalation of hostilities as uh, Labour's campaign hits its stride. Uh, this week, Milbank have publicly accused the BBC and ITN of colluding against the Labour Party, although the BBC strenuously deny any antipathy towards <laughs> <laughs> uh, During Mr Blair's visit to a hospital in King's Lynn, a senior Labour aide allegedly unplugged a news camera. Uh, strangely, the camera kept rolling, as indeed did the eyes of the woman on the life support machine. <laughs> Paul and Elton, your stiff opposition. Well, that's William Hague. It's Portilla. Don't stand in front of that target. <laughs> um, Margaret Thatcher, the mad old bat has risen. <laughs> <laughs> and Charles Kennedy, and he's hitting a piece of nail into a piece of wood. Um, it's such a dangerous occupation, he's got a hard hat. <laughs> <laughs> in case the nail should spring out of the wood and pierce his skull. <laughs> So, Mrs Thatcher, you noticed her? I yes, think. I didn't see the speech, but she made a very funny joke, didn't she? We can show you the joke. Okay, you can judge for look. yourselves. All right. On my way here, I passed a local cinema, and it turns out that you were expecting me, after all, for the billboards read, The Mummy Returns. <laughs> Get <laughs> guess, guess who's doing BAFTA next year? <laughs> She might have thought it was sort of The Mummy Returns, with William Hague as her son. Right. You never know whether she's got the joke or not, do you? Right. OK, you think there might be a subtext to the joke that renders it amusing? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't suppose the joke writer said, this is a joke about you being half dead and bandages falling off you. <laughs> You've come back to haunt the party. I don't... Uh, I'll mm. do it, is yeah. what you said. <laughs> mm. So, uh, Edward Heath, you interviewed him. Yes, and the thing about interviewing Ted Heath is it's not what he says, it's that amazing face and how it all moves around. And I said in the interview, he's got more facial expressions than Danny LaRue, because what he doesn't say, and it's all those eye winking and twinkling and moving of the... That's, what, what, that's what's good to write about. But You fancy him, don't you? <laughs> I, I do not fancy do Ted Heath. I know but I have weird tastes, Angus. <laughs> 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 I don't run to Ted Heath. Yeah, Michael good. Portillo, maybe. Mm. It's a yes. bit of a pin up. That, that it's is a bit of a pin up. <laughs> Pretty weird. Um. <laughs> He's so gorgeous in a cardigan, so almost cuddly. And so, who's been uh, inadvertently uh, helping the Lib Dems this week? You read about this? ITN's uh, Mark Webster apparently signed 30 autographs for people who thought that he was Charles <laughs> Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> we can see how similar they are. <laughs> <laughs> So what were some of the other minor parties up to this week? There were one or two um, party political broadcasts, one on behalf of the Scottish National Party, yes, yeah. who didn't at all rely on stereotypical images of Scotsmen. So is there any party which has <laughs> undivided loyalty to Scotland? A party that won't desert its principles or take its orders from London? There is one. The SNP. <laughs> well, there's no doubting their credentials. <laughs> it looks like he's going to toss the caber. <laughs> Would it make you vote for them, though? Would a particular broadcast like that? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> where, do I, where do I put the cross? <laughs> Next to SNP. Right, that's got, they've got my vote. OK, that was easy. And Ian Paisley, he's been... Um... Oh, he's got my vote as well. Right. <laughs> he's against line dancing. That's right. Yeah. Which isn't a bad policy, given... Yeah, but he's against it for all the wrong reasons. Right. What would the right reasons be? Well, it's good to be against it because it's completely boring, mindless, awful way of wasting your time, but he thinks it's strangely erotic. <laughs> talk about the candidates that I'm really interested in, all those parties like, what's this bird called Jordan with these enormous breasts that's in the paper that's going to stand as a candidate? In I think she country. can stand. <laughs> <laughs> She's standing as an MP, which the uh, Daily Star helpfully points out uh, means member of parliament, <laughs> not massive pair. <laughs> <laughs> 
This is the uh, awesome might of the opposition, uh, might being the operative word. Uh, in Plymouth this week, Margaret Thatcher ranted on for the best part of an hour that she would never be prepared to give up the pound, at which point the big issue seller said, look, if you don't want it, just say so. <laughs> uh, last weekend, as a host of celebrities came out in support of Labour, uh, one Conservative spokesman was quick to point out the Tories are backed by Ed Stupot Stewart. It just gets worse, doesn't it? <laughs> At the end of that round, to quote Jordan's manifesto, both teams have a massive pair, boasting as they do two apiece. <laughs> and so to those tiny incidental stories that are tucked away in the depths of the broadsheets and blazoned across the front pages of the tabloids. Paul and Elton, your amusing turn. What a pair of Charlies. I think this is about Prince Charles and Philip isn't it, about the fact that uh, it's the uh, Prince Philip's 80th birthday coming up, a nation celebrates mm -hmm. dancing in the streets. Um, <laughs> him and Charles don't really get on particularly well. There's a rift between the two of them. There's also sort of the idea that maybe he'd sort of like Prince Philip had kind of pushed and heavily manoeuvred uh, Charles into the marriage to die. What's Phil said about Charlie? Well, he said he's useless. He'll be, didn't he? He said be yeah. useless. Yeah. He mm. said useless. He'll be a useless, terrible king, he said. Precious, terrible. extravagant and lacking in the dedication to make a good king. Terrible king, yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Unlike, Says someone. unlike this a marvellous success story that Prince Philip's been for the last 60 years. <laughs> there was yeah. an official denial. The palace mm. said, this isn't true. Right. I don't think anybody thought it was, because it was all in the mail. <laughs> and how has Philip been celebrating his 80th birthday? The bumps. Have <laughs> <laughs> they got some concert at Royal Albert Hall? Almost as ridiculous. Uh, yes, a concert by hearsay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can we still get tickets? <laughs> the concert was last night, because... On the night of his birthday, he's having a meal. Well, takeaway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe having a Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> he's always welcome at the Bamboo Palace. <laughs> I'm sure it's about Chelsea Flower Show and Charlie Dimmitt and Prince Charles. They Who? both had gardens. Prince yeah. Charles had a strange garden based on an Islamic carpet. Right. Although how you make flowers go geometric, I don't know. Maybe he talks to them for hours and bores them into being <laughs> geometric. <laughs> I don't know about Charlie Dimmock. Does she have a garden? She must have been there. She must have been there. Wouldn't be the Chelsea hey. Flower Show without... You obviously the... haven't been watching the coverage on BBC, then, because she does actually present it. I've got better things to, to do, Angus. I'm editing mm. a national newspaper. I'm not oh, tuning just... into Charlie Dimmock going sorry. on about plants in the middle we of the day. We didn't realise no-one's read it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, this is uh, another week in the life of the royal family. Uh, the row between Philip and Charles is the latest emotional upheaval to hit the royals, according to the Express. Uh, the Queen and Philip often give each other a terrific mutual tongue lashing. <laughs> <laughs> nice to know they still enjoy that sort of relationship after 54 years of marriage. Ian and Janet, your uh, top spin reveals no crick fix. Uh, this has got to be about Lord Condon's report about corruption in cricket. I think that... Crick? The other... Who's crick. ever called it crick? Look, uh, Fancy well, a I... game of crick? <laughs> That's the Daily Mirror's word for cricket. It's fascinating, isn't it? Paul Condon, while he was head of the police, I think corruption uh, was widespread, and now he's been charged with sorting out corruption in cricket, mm. and uh, he doesn't seem to be having any more success. Mm. He's had six months, this um, policeman, to um, interview Alex Stewart. Uh, the England um, cricketer, but he's been unable to do so. Apparently Stuart's been playing some game or other um, <laughs> round the world. He's Name managed to identify own. this bookmaker in India called Mr Big, <laughs> <laughs> um, which again is pretty good police work. Mm -hmm. um, not many Mr Bigs in the phone book in Delhi, but <laughs> he's responsible for it all. Mm. And there you go. What are the various things that you can bet on in Crick? You can bet on the number of overs, you can bet on batsmen's individual total, you can bet on the number of catches. Who wins the toss you can bet on? Right. How it's... would that be fixed? Well, I'm if you toss sure the coin out and put to. your foot on and say, yeah, it's heads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wouldn't that be suspicious? <laughs> <laughs> to the other players? Not to pull on them. <laughs> and do you know what a Sunday sandwich is? Yeah. Do you? Yes. Well, let's move on then. <laughs> Did you see that show, Puppetry of the Penis? Interestingly not, no. <laughs> that's one of those links, Janet, that's so effortless. <laughs> well, is the show the... still on? I thought it had been pulled off, surely. Oh. It's... <laughs> well, in the Puppetry of the 
penis they make mm. a sandwich from that part of their anatomy. So a Sunday sandwich, is it a version of that? Perhaps. Um... Can I mention it's got nothing to do with penis? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is it then? Uh, it's when you play two games over a weekend. Oh. Uh, it's not as good as doing something with your willy, though. Two... <laughs> Well, not for your readership, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how did all this start? Who kicked it off? That's a footballing term, isn't it? Sorry. Um, who? It was the South opened. African captain, a man yeah. called Cronje. He admitted it. He said, I, I took bribes and so did some of my mates. Mm. And they threw games. And who did he blame it on? <sighs> the boogie. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, uh, he blamed it on Satan. I'd taken my eyes off Jesus, is how he... But that's how... Christian cricketers express themselves. Take my eyes off Jesus. Mm. Yeah, and then he yorked him. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, cricket apart, what's the most interesting sports story this week? David Beckham and his haircut. Exactly. The haircut's fantastic. Do you like it? <laughs> I think it looks really excellent. And do you know where he got the idea from? Taxi, Taxi driver. Taxi driver, the film, yeah. Mm. <laughs> but he didn't watch the film, did he? He saw a picture of it. He saw the poster, yeah. Just as well I didn't see the poster of something about Mary, or God knows what. <laughs> <laughs> Hairstyle will be like. Uh, this is the uh, depressing news that cricket has uh, changed out of all recognition. Up to now, the uh, only person in England to receive a hefty backhander is Geoffrey Boycott's girlfriend. <laughs> Sir Paul Condon's report on corruption in cricket looks set to spoil the forthcoming Ashes series against Australia, which England win, incidentally, three games to two. <laughs> Which uh, fatal slips mean at the end of this innings, it's uh, Paul and Elton who are in danger of being caught behind as they are 6 3. <laughs> uh, four possibilities with one odd one. Uh, that's our panel who now have to play odd one out. Just one per team this week Paul and Elton. Your four are these five uh, Sean Connery. Jerry yeah. Halliwell, the Hinduja brothers, and Lord Gilbert of Dudley. Is um, it about voting? Because you mentioned Jerry Halliwell earlier. She's not allowed to... Well, she, she didn't register mm -hmm. on the electoral roll, so she can't vote in this country. And mm. uh, I think Sean Connery, of course, he's famously uh, it supports the Scottish nationalists, but he lives uh, overseas on the Bahamas, I think. So he, presumably he, he's not a voter. Mm -hmm. Lord Gilbert, he won't be allowed to vote because he's a member of the House of Lords. Well, mm -hmm. the other two must be the one out. They can vote. Is the right answer. Mm. Very good. <laughs> Sean Connery, of course, uh, can't vote because he lives in the Bahamas. Yes. Although he does have a flat in Belgravia, but he's chosen not to register there. They tried to offer him a knighthood, didn't they? Oh, they mm. did give him a knighthood. Mm -hmm. He said it was the most important day of his life. For most of us, I think it was when he stopped Blofeld destroying the earth. <laughs> <laughs> and Jerry is not registered to vote for security reasons. Despite saying at her album launch, uh, I want people to realise how important it is to vote. And who else was <laughs> present at uh, her album launch? A dog? Well, the dog goes everywhere. Yeah. The dog does the singing. That's very good. <laughs> I bet the dog would do Raining Men better than she does. <laughs> Talk about wet. Uh, it's uh, Raining Men. I preferred the weather girls. Big women. I like them. <laughs> Sad. The weather girls would have eaten her. <laughs> <laughs> Is impersonation so good? I don't think it's mm. time for stars in your eyes. Yeah, there's a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're going to be offensive, stars. Janet. <laughs> <laughs> who would you be on Stars in Your Eyes? Yes, who would you be in? You can be me, I won't be offended. I, I, I can make you this dress even, but it might fit you rather differently. Mm. <laughs> I think I'd come up to about the waist. <laughs> 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 the uh, Hinduja brothers are the old ones out, yes, as you mentioned, uh, because they, uh, they can vote. And how does uh, Tony Blair refer to the Hindujas? He, he avoids the subject, doesn't he? He says, let's move on, this is all history. Yeah. Whenever yeah. anyone says anything, he says, let's move on, let's move on. Let's move on, it's all over. <laughs> it's history, we don't want to talk about this, let's move on. Dangerously close to an impersonation. No, no, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a bit of Rory Bremner in you? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he refers to them as GP and SP, or at least he did in a letter of the 15th of June, 1999, uh, where he said, Dear GP, thank you for your letter of the 21st of May, welcoming the appointment of Keith Vaz to a ministerial post within government. And then he signs it, Yours ever, Tony. There was a whole inquiry into the Hinduja affair, and Blair didn't declare these letters. Mm -hmm. He said he'd had no contact with them, apart, obviously, from writing them friendly letters saying, Yours ever, Tony. Mm. 
Trust him, he's a regular guy. <laughs> he just has big memory lapses about Indians. <laughs> Yes, it, uh, the answer is that they've all been uh, unable to vote, uh, or will be unable to vote, in the general election, except the Hinduja brothers, uh, who've been allowed to leave India to do so, pending the bribery and corruption trial. Uh, over the years, the Hinduja brothers' friendship has almost come to be regarded as an endorsement of a politician's standing, as can be seen by their relationship with Tony Blair, William Haig, and Charles Kennedy. <laughs> John Gilbert was the first example of an MP being shunted out to allow Blair's favourites to be parachuted in. Uh, the most recent of these, Sean Woodward, has spent the last few days in his new Merseyside constituency knocking on doors and asking, A, can I count on your vote? And B, where are the wheels on my car? <laughs> Ian and Janet, your experienced internationals are Kevin Keegan, Bill Clinton, Silvio Berlusconi and Rory Bremner. This is about being banned by political parties. Because Rory Bremner isn't allowed on the Labour Party bus. Um, Berlusconi banned um, some comics yeah. in Italy. Various people doing rather good impressions of him. Yep. I won't bore He's you so with my Berlusconi. <laughs> right. I'll oh, do. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did it, did yeah. he? Give us a clue. Um, it involves someone not in the picture. <laughs> I said give us a clue. <laughs> right, OK. Daffy Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Stalin. Astonishing that Mr. Should... Pastry. <laughs> <laughs> None of these people are in the picture. They must all be the right answer. Yep. Not necessarily. You can keep going, but it might take a while. One more clue. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that or we bring Chegwin back. <laughs> in which case, it's a sportif question. Right, really? then I don't know. Go oh, on. I'll with get it. on here. Right. Yeah, I've got no <laughs> idea. Uh, the answer is that they've all played sport with Tony Blair. Uh, with the exception of Silvio Berlusconi, who has announced his intention to play tennis uh, with him in Tuscany as one of his ministerial duties. Uh, that's what what sport has Clinton played with him? He played, um, he played golf at a course near Chequers. He played four and a half holes, although no one quite knows how you play half a hole. <laughs> <laughs> you well, start near with the green. If a hole's 400 yards, you move up 200 yards and hit it from there. That's half a hole. Well, that's a yeah. whole hole. It's just only 200 yards. No, yeah. no, 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 because if the official hole is 400 yards and you only play 200 yards, it plays half a hole. I mean, he doesn't sellotape half the hole over and then try and knock it <laughs> <the> hole. <over. laughs> if he started from the tee and it's a 400 yards, he knocks it 200 yards and puts it in his pocket, that's not played a hole. He plays a hole, 200 yards, knocks the ball in, that's a play half a hole. So, there you go. <laughs> they did uh, break a club rule as well. They had a barbecue in the bunkers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they didn't wear golf shoes. People are actually strung up. Punishable by death. <laughs> President Clinton is a very keen golfer, although in his case, check trousers is more a reminder than a golf item. In a recent interview, in a recent interview, Blair's former tennis partner, Rory Bremner, bemoaned the state of British politics before apologising, saying, God, I sound like Victor Meldrew. Well, it was the first time for everything. <laughs> uh, which volley of abuse means at the end of this exercise, uh, Paul and Elton are a little behind on points, trailing as they are, 6-5. Missing Words is our fourth and, more importantly, last round. A cross-section of crossheads sliced from their columns, including many, none or more, from this week's guest publication, the irreplaceable Emu Today <laughs> and Tomorrow. Uh, obviously the result of a merger between Emu Today and Emu Tomorrow. <laughs> uh, you wait for Emu on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, to your marks, four. Wogan blasts what? Into outer space. <laughs> He's going to Neptune. Uranus? Saturn. <laughs> Blast BBC bosses. Eurovision coverage. More extraordinary than that. Uh, Wogan blasts out of kettles. <laughs> <laughs> These were kettles in Hertfordshire that picked up Radio 2. Yes. It does kettles. explain a lot about Radio 2's figures, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Counting every kettle in the country. <laughs> uh, next, the best days of your life are what? Uh, oh, no, let's sort this one. This is working, isn't it? You're, when you're working. Uh, uh, spent at work. Spent at work. Is the right answer, yes, yeah. according to experts. Work provides us with fulfilment, friends, and romance. <laughs> <laughs> Next, the suing is what? A waste of time, dangerous, difficult, don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
The answer is actually simply bad manners. Well, don't, don't, well, don't tell us. Oh, I see, that's, that's, yeah, that's what the answer is. And this is a guest who uh, fell through a glass seat at a friend's dinner party uh, and sent her a note suing her for £200 oh, God, yeah. under the Occupier's she... Liability Act for providing defective seating. <laughs> Next, get the most from what? Emu. Your emu. Emus. Petting your emu. This is very worrying because it is actually your emu. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you get the most from your emu. Products uh, range from emu patties to emu checkbook covers to emu shampoo, emu lip conditioner, and emu power rub plus, uh, which is, I think, illegal in most civilized countries. <laughs> uh, next, uh, Las Vegas welcomes what convention? Emu convention. Emu. It's got to be. Uh, it's not emu, no. It is from Emu Today, however. <laughs> Ostrich. Why do you say that? Mm, sort of fellow bird. It's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is ostrich. The advantage of ostrich meat, apparently, is that it's lower in cholesterol. Uh, the disadvantage being, of course, that it tastes of ostrich. <laughs> uh, next, what in drug quiz? Well, we could go for broke and say emus, but... Um... But it's not from Emu Today. Yeah. Royal family. Professional yeah. footballers. Uh, no, it is, in fact... Ostrich farmer, <laughs> which pansying around means at the end of this display, this week's useless sods are Paul and Elton with seven, whilst this week's salts of the earth are Ian and Janet with nine. <laughs> so, a magnum of champagne to our winners, a magnum ice cream to our losers. Oh, good. Uh, one of those. Good. Have you got it now? Uh, later, <laughs> afterwards, I thought, maybe. Otherwise it would melt under the lights. Uh, but, obviously, under the lights. Where else would it melt? Uh, but... In an oven? Yes. <laughs> Just outside? Mm -hmm. Hot day? Between our legs. Not <laughs> me, thanks. I'll just right. to the white <laughs> Thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Janet Street Porter, Paul Merton and Elton John. And I leave you with news that in Harley Street, Jerry Halliwell's dietitian prepares her packed lunch. <laughs> In an unfortunate mix-up, the Commission for Racial Equality booked Jim Davidson for the after-dinner cabaret. <laughs> and Madame Two Swords concedes after the unveiling of another celebrity statue, there's something about the dead, lifeless eyes that the waxwork just can't capture. <laughs> Good night. Ah, uh, don't worry, there's plenty more laughs on the way. We're heading even further back in time next in UK TV documentary. Have I Got 2000 for You is on the way in just a few moments.